straight to the Skeletons exclusively spawn within the Nether Fortress bounding box. On any solid block within the fortress structures, a bounding box is an area surrounding a Nether Fortress structure that tells the game where Nether Fortress mobs can spawn. For spawns outside the fortress, you'll need to use Nether Bricks as a platform. All of this happens within the fortress bounding boxes, which you can visualize using the mini HUD mod. I'll explain how to do this later. By using weather roses on the spawning platform, you can increase weather skeleton spawns while excluding other mob spawns. You can place the weather roses on either netherrack or dirt, and only weather skeletons will spawn on them. This strategy is often used in end game farms. This is what a crossroad looks like a structure where four paths meet without a central housing. Crossroads have a larger bounding box than other structures making them perfect for weather skeleton farms. To visualise these bounding boxes, you can use a mini hub mod. I'll explain how to use it shortly. Each crossroad measures 19 by 19 in size with the point where the paths intersect at its centre. To determine the edges, simply count 9 blocks out in every direction from the centre. To figure out where the lowest platform is, count down 7 blocks from here. Weather skeletons can then spawn on the 7th block. Add two more platforms three blocks above the bottom platform. Remember, the lowest bottom platform possible is at Y level 48. I'll clarify its importance later. For increased rates, find multiple crossroads adjacent to each other. While a maximum of five crossroads together is very rare, you can use external tools to locate them. I'll be listing a few necessary mods and tools to use, which can be found in the description. Mini HUD is a mod that allows you to visualise the fortress bounding boxes. To enable it, press an ALT H then C and set main rendering toggle, overlay structure main toggle and never fortress to true. In the structures tab, Chunk Base is a website where you can locate nearby fortresses and their biomes using the seed. Fortress Finder is an essential tool for finding the most optimal crossroads using the seed. If you are going to use my design, enter 1 for the triple line crossroad, 48 for the max Y level and your preferred search distance. Sodium mod improves your minecraft performance and reduces lag. Carpet mod enhances your minecraft experience with optimizations and features suited for both technical and casual players. Indian mod pairs very well with sodium for additional minecraft optimizations. Carpet Sky Edition mod allows you to have a void never for testing never farms. There are many strategies to boost your rates and weather skeleton spawn attempts, and I'll be covering every method I've discovered. For better fortress spawn rates, look for another fortress deep in the Souls and Valley or Warped Forest. These biomes have fewer biome related mob spawns, which reduces the need for extensive spawn proofing. However, if you are doing a nether perimeter, the biomes become irrelevant, as spawn attempts only occur within the farm itself. You can prevent mob spawns by placing slabs, pressure plates or lava. For farms with a kill chamber underneath the farm, you'll need to spawn proof the surrounding areas up to 128 blocks from your standing position. Any mob outside this radius will instantly despawn. The mini hub mod can help you visualize where spawn proofing is needed. Set up a 128 block sphere from your AFK spot and spawn proof within the sphere, excluding the biome Soul Sand Valley and the Warped Forest. You also need to be at least 24 blocks away in the sphere from the spawning platforms as no mobs can spawn within this radius. Be mindful of the mob cap while designing your farm. 
a mob cap dictates the maximum number of mobs that can spawn within the area. Once it reaches 70, no more spawn attempts will be made. To achieve maximum rates, keep the mob cap consistently at 70 and focus on killing or transporting to the nether as fast as possible. If the mob cap isn't consistently met, prioritise maximising the amount of spawning spaces available. Keep in mind that light levels impact spawns, so aim for light level 0 everywhere, including spawning spaces near the nether portals. For the fastest rates possible, never portals is the way to go. However, it's worth noting that for a two-dimensional farm, you'll require either another player or a carpet bot to ensure that the overworld side remains loaded. The lower the fortress and spawning platforms are, the higher the chance of mob spawning. However, this significantly increases spawn rates only when breaking the bedrock roof above the platforms and the skirt area. The spawn attempt percentage is based on the available spawning levels between the bottom and the top block of the world. You may recognise these skirts around mob farms. These enhances pack spawnings, which can boost the chances of more spawn attempts within the farm. Typically, one skirt on the higher spawning platform is needed for mob farms. It's crucial to use nether bricks for the skirts and place them on all three layers of the spawning platforms, as nether fortresses require all three platforms for maximum spawn attempts. Also, don't forget to spawn through the skirts. You can boost your rate slightly in the soul sand valley by having a bunch of striders within the area. Striders suppress the spawning of gas and skeletons in the soul sand valley. For technical players in the end game, a nether perimeter is advisable. This approach can fully eliminate spawn attempts and effectively reduce lag within the area. Piglins are often used as bait to attract weather skeletons. Iron golems are also an option. They are more often used in beginner farms. You'll frequently encounter piglins combined in one spot and close by walls or trapdoors. This arrangement ensures that river skeletons navigate to the right spot to fall down. The aggro range of piglins is sifting blocks in a sphere. It is important to capture piglins holding swords, because they're easier to handle during the process and having a piglin with a bow would risk the river skeletons dying before reaching the kill chamber. To capture piglins, find a nearby never waste or crimson forest. Use boats to simplify the process, preventing them from despawning. Safely transport them to their positions by having a path towards the farm. However, remember to name tag the piglins as you put them into the farm so that they don't despawn. One advantage of using minecarts is that when a mob enters a minecart, that mob is then removed from the mob cap, which allows more mobs to spawn. Minecarts are often dispensed every 8 game tips because the collection of minecarts is limited to hopper speed. You may have noticed I don't have any curved rails in the main minecart system. That's because curved rails aren't very reliable when you have a lot of minecarts at one time. By having slanted corners like so, makes the system more robust and prone to minecart issues. To eject mobs from a minecart, Cart, you use an activator rail. The game will try to find a valid spot to eject the mob onto. Here I have manipulated and covered the possible areas to always guarantee that the mob will be ejected into the same spot every time. To collect the minecarts, you can direct them into a cauldron with lava, which burns the minecart into an item form. But because there is a hopper underneath, the hopper is fast enough to suck the item before it burns. You could try experimenting with curved rails as they make the minecarts go faster, but I chose to not implement this due to the complexity. Here I'm utilising the entire available spawning area across all three crossroads. In this setup, there are 3,249 river roses and neverack creating the spawning spaces. To attract the river skeletons, I position piglins at the platform edges. Each piglin is name tagged and evenly spread out in their designated area, increasing the drop speed of river skeletons. A total of 30 piglins are used, 5 on each side and 10 on each layer. A line of trapdoors serves to prevent river skeletons from crossing over and reduces their pathfinding. As river skeletons fall, they land on honey blocks to minimise fall damage. The design features three lines or tracks for minecarts to pick up the river skeletons. The river skeletons travel along these tracks, taking suffocation damage towards the end for a one hit kill. Tracks descend because the player and the kill chamber must be 24 blocks away from the spawning platform. 
Once the weather skeleton is ejected from a minecart from an activator well, they land into the kill chamber. The minecart clips into the cauldron which turns into an item that gets picked up by the hopper below into the chest storage. The player attacks the armor stand every 10 game tips with the sweeping enchantment that kills the wither skeletons. To achieve 10 game tick attacks, a beacon with haste 2 is necessary, and strength 2 and regeneration are ideal for long AFK sessions. A hopper minecart gathers all the items from underneath and ejects them into an item alignment collection system. The XP rises towards the player and the excess is burnt by lava to reduce lag. The player or lever activates the clock, triggering minecarts dispensing every 8 game tips, along with the hopper minecart and item alignment system. While using carpet mod is ideal for attacking every 10 game tips, an alternative is possible without it. By removing the second armor stand and placing the lever here, you can manually start the farm. Use any auto clicker of your choice and set the milliseconds to 500. However, this alternative slightly reduces rates but still yields over 2000 skulls an hour. Or even higher rates, you can capitalize on the structures surrounding the crossroads. This approach can increase the rates up to nearly 2500 skulls an hour depending on the number of available structures used. If you turn on the bounding boxes and identify what structures are around the crossroads, I'll provide some examples of what you can do. You may encounter side paths, this is what you can do. If you have long corridors alongside the crossroads, then you can do this. If you're lucky and happen to have another crossroad or two, then this is what you can do. You could technically look for a 4 or 5 crossroad and integrate this design to get the maximum rates possible. For paths on the end, adopt this approach. For other rooms, insert spawning spaces within the bounding box and enclose them with walls. Additional spawning spaces require some adjustments. Enclose piglins with walls, adding an extra one at the back while leaving the front open. Use either trapdoors or slabs on top of the walls. Eliminate trapdoors within gaps and place buttons on the edge to prevent activating the trapdoors. Extend walls outside the spawning spaces and increase the skirt by 10 blocks on all sides. Ideally, the expansion should reach at least 12 blocks from the piglins, as weather skeletons will take slightly longer to reach the drop chute. For the best results, spawn proof everything and make a hole in the roof above the spawning spaces and the skirt. Creating this video and farm design took well over 100 hours to make. Your support on Patreon would make a huge difference. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around.